those people that think they are great at multitasking are the worst because it's not possible. So just believe me and I will give you the research if you need. So what can you do to get more done? The thing is, the first thing, avoid multitasking. Hi, and welcome to Lead Well. This week, we'll have the second episode on time management. So if you missed out last week, go back. We talked about why is time management important and why is it so crucial these days? And today, let's start at looking at very specific things, very specific approaches, very specific tools and techniques that you can do, that you can take to actually, yeah, have a better relationship with your time. Because isn't that a great idea of having a really nice relationship with your time? Because I'm not telling you a secret. We all have the same amount of time at our disposition. It's 24 hours a day. And it's roughly 4,000 weeks in a lifetime. So when you think about it, 4,000 weeks, I mean, I'm close to 60, so I have probably a thousand weeks left. So I want to make sure that I make the best out of these thousand weeks. I don't want to waste my time. But on the other hand, I also don't want to really be pressured and feel that I have to do something because that's not a good feeling as well. I think the best way of spending my time is actually to live every single moment of it to the fullest extent, because then I get stuff done. And at the same time, I enjoy it. I remember when I was really busy, I always felt that I was not in the right place at the right time. So when I was at work, I felt I would need to be home with my husband. When I was home with my husband, I felt I wanted to be with my horse. If I was in London, I wanted to be here in Munich. If I was in Munich, there was something going on in, uh, in Connecticut that I wanted to be with. So I always had this, this kind of feeling that I was not doing the right thing. And whenever someone asked me, what do you want to have more of? What would you like to have more of? It was always time time. But the thing is, we all have a lot of time, actually. We have 24 hours a day and we can make the best out of it. So let's look into what you can do to actually fully use that time for you and also for the work that needs to be done. So last time we said there are two things that you can do to actually get better at time management. The first thing is do more stuff in the given time. So become more productive, become more efficient. So do more in the same time. And then next time we'll talk about what can you do to prioritize? What can you do to actually get things off your agenda to then have more, yeah, more flexibility with your own time. So. How about doing more in the same time period? What I will share with you now is probably counterintuitive. Unless you have already looked into multitasking and how our brain works and you are very experienced with that already. Because let me tell you that even me as a woman, I cannot multitask, nor can you, because it's not possible. Our brains, a human brain is not ready, is not, is not capable to multitask. Our brain is very sequential. It has to do one thing after the other. And yes, it is really, really fast in switching between things but it can only do, do one thing at a time. Of course, we're talking about similar things. I can walk and talk. And even that sometimes makes it difficult. As soon as the terrain is difficult, it can become difficult. Because again, our brain 
it has to do something automatically so that it can focus on the other thing. So let's look into this insight from the perspective of what does this have to do with time management? A lot of my coaches struggle because they feel really exhausted in the evening because they have to juggle so many things. They have so many things to do and so many things to get done. And when we talk, the first thing we do, by the way, is we look at their meeting calendar. Because if you look at your meetings, if you have a series of meetings that are pre-set, and also me as a solopreneur, I have a lot of meetings in my calendar. So a good way of managing my time in meetings is to have a sort of retrospection. So what I challenge my clients with is at the end of the day, after a set of sessions, look back at your meetings and ask yourself several questions. So the first question is, how important was this meeting for my current productivity, for my current job? On a scale of one to 10, let me rate that. How important was it that I was there? What was my contribution to this meeting? How about the length of this meeting? Was it the right time? Did it feel too long? Have we wasted time there? Maybe because there was no agenda. That's, by the way, the number one time waste in meetings because there was no agenda. What was the time allocated? Was it an informative meeting or was it a decision meeting? And yes, I know a lot of people say, well, you don't have to come together for informative meetings because you could as well send an email. I kind of doubt that because there is research that shows that information provided in an email, instructions provided in an email are almost never followed. So you might have your own experience with that. But still, it's important for you to know. And then you say, okay, how useful was it for me? So how important was it? What was my contribution? What was the time allocated? Was it an informative or a decision meeting? What was the usefulness? And how important was it for me to be there? Could I find a replacement? Could I say, well, I will, I will not go. Maybe I will only go if there is an agenda and I will decide upon the agenda whether I will uh, participate or not. Maybe there is someone else that is going and that can fill me in. Or maybe there is someone that I can send to that meeting. Sometimes employees they feel really important when they can go to a particular part of meetings. And this already will help you. So have this retrospection on meetings, making sure that you only go to those meetings that you need to go to, then make them the right time. And also very important, schedule in some breaks. And that again is true for meetings that are online because you want to be able to get out and get a coffee or get out and go to the toilet. I mean, I remember those times where I was rushing to the bathroom and rushing back and I was always feeling pressured. And that shouldn't be the case because we're all human. We all need that break. So make sure that you schedule in maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes at the beginning or at the end of a meeting. Probably the end of a meeting is harder to keep. So say, we'll start the meeting at five past. We'll start the meeting at 10 past. And I'm almost sure that your colleagues will be really, really grateful if you suggest that because everyone is suffering from that. So make sure you schedule in little breaks between your meetings so that you don't have to rush between them. Also because you want to rewire your brain to get from one subject to the next. And yeah, I know it's easy to say, 
However, I can tell you those of my coaches, those of my clients who have actually tried it are really, really happy because they say it makes them feel so much more relaxed, even with the same amount of meetings they have in their days. And a lot of them have really meetings throughout their work days. So that was it about meetings. But let me go back to what you can do to actually avoid this multitasking that it's not possible. And by the way, if you're telling me, Christine, I'm great at multitasking, I have scientific evidence to tell you, then you're probably worse than anyone else. Because there is a study that says those people that think they are great at multitasking are the worst. Because it's not possible. So just believe me, and I will give you the research if you need. So what can you do to get more done? The thing is, the first thing, avoid multitasking. Because what happens in multitasking is that your brain is switching between two things in a very, very, very quick way. But there is a lot of disruption, a lot of energy is wasted by switching from one to the other. And it's really exhaustive. And so the one thing that will help you get more stuff done in the same time is focus. So really focus, concentrate on one thing after the other. And I know at the beginning, it feels really strange. And it might even feel hard, but believe me, if you're focusing and you stick to that, you will find a lot of relief from that. So what can you do? There is this technique that's called the Pomodoro technique. The idea behind is that you have a set time to actually work and then a short break. The original idea was 25 minutes of work and then a five minutes break. I found some of my clients, they are so high, so overworked, they are not able to concentrate for twice, 25 minutes from the get go. So what we do with them is we change the ratio. We say, okay, maybe let's start with as little as 10 minutes, 12 minutes. If even that is too long, start with five minutes. Nothing keeps you from doing that. So start with as little as you think is necessary to keep you focused for that amount of time and then have a short break. And a break means doing something completely different. That is something that Dr. Simon Senner, the interview guest that I already had on my uh, podcast, told us that it's so crucial that if you do, a, if you make a break, Really do something different. So get up if you're sitting in front of a computer. Look at something else rather than another screen or rather than just doing a quick email in between. So go, stand up, walk, go to the kitchen, get something to drink. Even you can stay in your seat, but then have a cup of tea, have a, a cup of coffee and drink with full attention on drinking. And then you go back and you focus again. Because again, your brain needs time to actually focus. Again, there is research that says it takes up to 12 minutes for your brain to focus again. So think about it. How often in your day do you have 12 minutes to focus on one particular thing? I bet if you're normal, close to not, never. But that's the amount of time that our brain needs to actually dig in, dig deeper. And so using this Pomodoro technique, you can train your brain to actually focus again. Ideally, at the end, you will have 25 minutes of work, concentrated work, and then a five minutes break. When you think about these 12 minutes that we need to concentrate, think about all the interruptions 
during your day. That's the other very important thing you can do to get more stuff done in the same time. Get rid of any interruption as much as possible at least. So make sure that you switch off your phone or at least put it on mute. No vibration because that will also distract you. Best is you put it away so that, that you don't even see it because even seeing our phones already distracts us. And the other thing, and that's even more important, is switch off the notifications on your computer. Because every single time you get a notification that there is an email, it costs your brain a lot of energy. Every single time you get a notification that, I don't know, there is a new WhatsApp message, there is a new messenger message, there is a new this, a new that, and uh, something in, in the news. Every single time your brain is distracted and needs time to process what has been going on and then to go back and get back to what you're actually working on. So two tips for today or two inspirations. The first is make sure you concentrate on one thing at a time and you might want to use the Pomodoro technique if that speaks to you. And the second thing is switch off your notifications and of course very closely look at all the meetings you have in your calendar and do this little rest retrospection as we said to ensure that your time in meetings is well spent as well. So for today, let me give you another little exercise that helps you focus. And it's an exercise with something that is always with you. So wherever you are, wherever you go, you have that with you and that is your breath. So what you can do is, if you want to close your eyes, close your eyes, otherwise you just keep them open. And breathe in and out in your natural rhythm. And notice the temperature of air as you inhale. And notice the temperature of air as you exhale. Just notice the temperature. You can also notice the movement of your belly. You can even put a hand on your belly. And notice how it goes up and down with every single breath. And then you can take in a deep breath and exhale. And if you want to get more energy, make your inhale longer than your exhale. So really deep inhale and a short exhale. This is the secret to getting more power through breath. Because I know we talked about relaxing through breath where exhale is longer. So very, very easy. And as I said, you always have your breath with you. So I hope you can use and leverage some of the things that we have discussed today. And uh, I hope you can lead a wonderful life and lead well yourself and others. Bye for now. This was Lead Well. Now, what is the one thing that you're taking away from this episode? Please share in the comments below and do share the podcast with your friends and family. But only if you like it.